here we go again. new month, same story. watch the tropics. good saturday morning to you. welcome to weekend recharge. i'm paul goodloe. and i'm lynette charles. america's weekend depends on the weather. and we're still going to be talking about helene because helene's aftermath has just been devastating for a lot of folks. and then on top of it, we have more activity. yeah, and also uh, out towards the, the west, we have major yes. heat wave going on here in october. Right. Fall, fall festivals. No, what about like water parks? Mm -hmm. uh, hope we back up the pools. exactly. it's amazing. but right now, perhaps the more uh, more eyes into the area. So let's talk about what's going on. This is the latest. We're looking at Invest 92L. Look at that. A 90% chance now of this thing becoming uh, tropical before it's all said and done. Getting uh, some of those characteristics and with that we are going to start to see again some big changes in the forecast for us. So this is what we're going to be watching as we go through time. Jensen, if you can click me forward, I appreciate it. All right. So this is what we have just uh, out here. This is going to continue to work its way through. This is what we're working with. So this this is what we know right through your Thursday. So tropical or subtropical development is possible. We will have those impacts. You heard Paul talk about those impacts. That's going to be the heavy rain and the flooding that's going to be coming out of this. And this is going to be likely. So most likely this is going to happen. And the greatest impacts over the Florida Peninsula. Uh, so not just um, the coast, right? Not just uh, the east coast of it. No, the west coast as well. We're going to be seeing both coasts all across that peninsula that we will add up the rainfall totals before it's all said and done. Let's check out our models. We're going to start you out with the Euro model. Once again, this is right through your Thursday, and your eye goes to that 8 to 12 inches, right? So over foot, we could see over in Tampa. And then look how it extends over towards Orlando. We can see off towards the east coast of Florida as well. And then look what happens once we go to the American model. So the GFS model shows even higher amounts. Now we're throwing in some of the pink there, and this goes over towards Jacksonville. Look at this. And then even Cedar Key. So again, you heard me talk about uh, the hardest hit spots for Helene. We're going to do it all over again with this rain. So places that don't need it, we are in a true surplus as of now. So many areas were in a drought, and Helene has wiped that drought out. Now, as we go into early next week, no matter whether it becomes tropical or subtropical, yes, it is going to be impacted. It doesn't even matter because we're going to be getting that rain. Now, because we have all that rain, we do have flash flooding that's going to continue Monday into your Tuesday. We can see it Tuesday into Wednesday as well. Now, let's time this out for you because we're going to see uh, all the green that will just continue continue across the map as we go day by day. So as we go into your Sunday, we see the rain moving in around Orlando, Tampa, Fort Myers, down off towards Miami, Cedar Key, Jacksonville. You'll be getting in on this. We'll see this Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, day after day. If you really don't follow the timeline up there, you may even get lost. But just know that we're going to continue to see more rain day after day after day. Paul. All about the impact across the upper Midwest and off towards the north and east because today we're looking pretty good out there. We do see lots of sunshine happening. We're seeing this around Chicago, Minneapolis. We'll take it. Detroit 66, Pittsburgh 67. Enjoy today because we will start to see some changes in the forecast. Unfortunately, because we do have some shower activity happening. But fortunately, because you're going to finally cool things down a lot, you're going to get really get that fall feel in a lot of spots. So highs ahead of that cold front, we are dealing with about five to ten degrees above average. We will see some shower activity. It's not going to be an abundance of moisture. And again, that's some good news out there. But with that said, we will have the potential for some scattered showers and thunderstorms. And some of these could be on the severe side as we head through today around the Great Lakes. And then as we head towards tomorrow, pushing a little bit further and off towards the east. So Buffalo, Elmira, Erie, down off towards Pittsburgh, you'll be getting in on the fact that we could see some damaging gusty wind and also some hail if we do get severe thunderstorms. Let's put this into motion for you and you can see uh, the activity starting to bear down as we go into your Sunday afternoon and by Buffalo we'll see this around three o'clock four o'clock continues to push that's the cold front that's moving through Burlington down off towards a bearing down on DC starts to weaken a little bit the further to the east you get but you'll get in on it Boston before it's all said and done there and then look at this up to about an inch of rain we could see and then there's that cooler air that we will have as we head into the week Paul that uh, then in many cases, our roads and bridges are built using decades-old rainfall records rather than building for our future changing climate. To explain why, let's bring in Chad Bergenis, the executive director for the Association of State Flood Plain Managers. Thank you so much for being here this morning. We appreciate that. So tell us, why are engineers still using weather data from decades ago to build our infrastructure? Yeah, good morning. Changing. That's a fact. Right? We have the data here. Rainfall rates also increasing. Big rainfall events have been increasing the last 50 years plus. So are we essentially wasting the taxpayer money right now? Coming, but how big of a problem is this? And in the meantime, while we're waiting for that change, you know, what do we do? 
Yes. The changes here, they're updating the records, rainfall records, and going to account for future uh, climate change. So how will that go into engineering our roads and bridges and other infrastructure? You update it, it's still up to individual states to say, hey, let's build this way. Absolutely. And that's with Association for State Floodplain Managers. Thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. We just hope that the state, you well, know. That's the thing about climate change. It doesn't happen every single right. day. But, you know, why spend this money today for something that might happen? But we look at the devastating exactly. scenes in North Carolina, in Georgia, in Tennessee, in South Carolina. It's going to be a day mm -hmm. and a day, unfortunately, probably within several days in our lifetime. So. Carolina is an understatement. Now more than a week after Hurricane Helene and the road to recovery will be a very, very long one there. Yeah, joining us now from Asheville, North Carolina is Misty Thomas with the American Red Cross. Thanks for joining us this morning. So you've been there. Uh, it's been just over a week since landfall. So how have things really changed in the last seven days? You know, I okay, so I know communication is improving, but some areas are still without it. And if that is the case, then how are you getting the word out to everybody? Yeah, so we have emergency. A lot of people want to help, but we also know that like in, in other disasters, they just drive there with friends and groups, churches, organizations, but even roads are difficult to even travel on. So uh, what is needed and how can people help uh, in a way that is useful? At the aftermath of Helene, but uh, have you had had a chance to uh, look at what's in the tropics and what may be hitting Florida um, over the next several days here? Personally, I have not. Busy and the first cross, uh, Red Cross is always the first on the scene. It's Misty Thomas uh, with the American Red Cross. Thanks for being with us. Even people who have house fires, the Red Cross is there. So great work. And of course, we're concerned about Florida for sure. But the great news is the forecast looks good there across the Carolinas in terms of recovery. We're not looking at any rain anytime soon. Yeah, that's right. Hey, weekend recharge is going to roll on for this first weekend of October. Plus, if you're all right, let's talk about what's going on across the Midwest, the Northeast. Sports day looking magnificent. Look at all these temperatures. We see 70s in Detroit, Buffalo 67, 73 in Pittsburgh, Roanoke. Lots of sunshine there coming in about 80 degrees. We will be watching these numbers that are ahead of the front are going to be above average, about 5 to 10 degrees above average. Front's going to move through, though, and you will get some relief out there. Before it's all said and done, we're going to be talking about uh, waking up 30s and 40s in the morning. I'll show you that in a matter of moments. We're not going to squeeze out a whole lot of moisture with this uh, boundary that moves through, but we will watch for the potential for some strong to severe thunderstorms before uh, today. We'll see this for your tomorrow, too. Uh, for your today, we're looking at it across the Great Lakes. Tomorrow, it moves a little bit further on off towards the east. Putting this into motion for you, we start to see uh, that cold front get its act together and uh, work its way in here as we head towards about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock your tomorrow affecting uh, Buffalo back off towards Pittsburgh as we go in through early Monday morning we'll see it around Binghamton and then early I'd say about 10 o'clock Boston New York you'll be getting on, on this on Monday morning so again your commute to work may be a, bit, a little bit on the wet side of things but not too wet not too bad those numbers coming in uh, up to about an inch before it's done so early in the week we will have that cooler air moving in so you heard me talk about the 30s and the 40s yes this is what we're going to be waking up to those morning lows you will definitely need that jacket, that sweater. It's going to be chilly. Paul, what's going on with a uh, tropical depression 14? And uh, right now, those winds sustained about 35 miles an hour, and it is moving very slowly, but it looks very healthy as of now. It is bringing some activity over towards Mexico. It will continue to work its way on off towards uh, the north and east. Again, in the Gulf of Mexico, as we head into your tomorrow, we will be talking about a tropical storm, and it will be Milton, and then it moves into a hurricane as we work our way in through your Wednesday morning, getting closer and closer to maybe a major hurricane. Once we get to 111 miles an hour, we're talking about a category three. So bottom line is this, Florida, you need to know your zone, and more importantly, you need to know that elevation as well, because we're going to be talking about some dangerous storm surge before it's all said and, got, it's said and done. So as we continue through this weekend, once again, you can see the pinks there. That's the wind shear, and this is the reason why it's going where it's going, because the wind shear is kind of squashing it further down off towards the south, so that's why it's going to be in the peninsula making that landfall as we move in through early next week. So de de development, 
does it really matter? Impacts are all going to be the same, but with that said, we also do know that it is going to be a hurricane. This is what it looks like in terms of the Euro model. We do have some heavy rain that will continue to move in. The Euro is a little bit faster than the GFS. The GFS actually kind of slows down a little bit, and it's more up towards Cedar Key. But in terms of the rainfall, look at all the rainfall that we will see around Tampa, about a foot, and the GFS does show you a little bit more rainfall coming in, not even a little bit more, a lot more, especially when you're talking about um, 12 inches to 18 inches, so a foot to a foot and a half, and we can see this all the way up towards Cedar Key and also Jacksonville. So the peninsula of Florida, you are going to be in for it as we go through the next several days here. We'll watch out for that flash flooding as well right into your Wednesday. The timing on this, we will have day after day of those downpours. Tropical downpours will be here. Pattern will be right up next. Have a great day, everyone.